Hi, welcome and welcome back to 1111 Oracle. Today we're going to do a pick a card reading on what your dreams are trying to tell you. This was actually uh, a request and so thank you so much uh, to the person who requested this um, pick a card reading. I really appreciate it. And I'm going to show you your choices. I have three for you here. And I'm going to lay them out so you can see them nicely. We have one, choice two, and choice three. So you have three crystals there. One, two, and three. See which one you're drawn to the most. Take a breathe, deep breath in and out if you like. All right, okay, and we're going to get right into it. Okay, let's start with number one. Okay, number one, I'm going to start you off with the fairy tale oracle deck. Okay, I'm going to give the cards a nice shuffle here. All right, that one, oh, that one really wants to come out this first one. Okay, I'm going to pick two. All right, we're going to go on to the tarot here, just a regular tarot deck. All right, we're going to pick, there we go, there's our choice. Okay, all right, and we need one more card. We are going to pick from the unicorn, Oracle of the Unicorns. Okay, so one would like to come out, and it's up. Okay, so let's gather up the cards, and we'll see what we've got here. Interesting. Okay, I'd like to start with the tarot, actually, before anything moving forward. Okay, so we have the King of Wands, or sorry, oh, that's in the King of Pentacles. Hmm, that's interesting slip up there. Not sure what that could mean, but we'll leave the King of Pentacles there for now. We'll think about it in a moment. Okay, the moon. Okay, we also have uh, the princess and the pea. So the keyword being sensitivity. Snow White and Red Rose. The Snow White from the story of Snow White and Red Rose is a different Snow White from the one with the dark hair. This one has white hair and she has a sister called Red Rose. So same name, also from the Brothers Graham, but completely different character. Keyword being sister love. You don't necessarily have to have a sister and it doesn't necessarily have to do anything with having a sister, but you might have a sister. Mm, sister rivalry, perhaps, if you're tuning into this. Maybe your dreams are expressing your frustration with that sister rivalry or rivalries within the family, perhaps. Okay. Um, anyway, if that doesn't resonate, just let it go. And then you have possibility. And what it says is raise your standards, elevate your expectations, you have unlimited potential. Okay, so let me tune in here to the collective reading that I have. And we're going to go into what's going on with your reading. All right, and, you know, what your dreams are trying to tell you. So it's interesting because we ask about the, um, what your dreams are trying to tell you. And then, of course, I'm trying to move the cards so you can see them. Sorry, my lighting is not the best, but we'll work with what we have. Anyway, we have nice ambiance. We'll go with the ambiance, okay, everybody? So, actually, here. There we go. Is that better? Yay! This one's going to be behind the plant. Yay, it works. 
lighting, hurrah. Okay. Perfect. Lovely. I do feel it's very interesting that you do have the moon card that comes up and we're talking about dreams and the moon card is often a card that I would associate with dreams. I'm getting the insight to tune in just a little bit more so I can pick on, up on some of the signs. Okay. All right, so I'm just gonna start talking as I, as I speak. I'm gonna be channeling spirit. A lot of times when I say things and I'm channeling in these pick a card readings, the information that comes to my mouth, comes out, is like even new for me. And I'm just like, what, what did I say? So let's see. Let's see if this resonates with you. So it's interesting because I'm drawing upon the symbols of the uh, princess and the pea right here, and then the moon. So the moon is associated with dreams, princess and the pea, well of course, you have this princess who comes to this castle uh, she's coming, she's been out in the rain, and then, you know, obviously all fairy tales are kind of weird, and, and the trials and tribulations that the characters have to face. So the queen says, well, I want to test that you're a real princess, so you're going to sleep on a bed of a hundred mattresses, and underneath those a hundred mattresses, there is a tiny pea. And if you can feel the pea, then you're a princess. Obviously this is ridiculous, but it's a story. Uh, for you, I'm getting that uh, waking life. You're wake. You're rather um, emotional or sensitive about certain issues in your waking life in your day to day. Uh, this could manifest in different ways. Okay, there's so many <clears throat> possibilities of how you manifest that sensitivity in a positive and in a negative sense. Just like the moon has two sides, okay, in the different phases of the moon, there's part, parts of the moon that you don't see, you don't see the moon during the daytime. So there's part of you that is hidden where you do keep your emotions down. You might have learned this in childhood, you might have learned this in your family, and now your dreams are sort of these crazy dreams, you know, very difficult to decipher, but basically a lot of the repressed emotions that you're not expressing in your waking life, or the truth behind the emotions that you're expressing in your waking life, whether you express those emotions in anger, or anxiety, or crying, or, you know, in sadness, however you express those sort of more difficult emotions, the truth of those emotions is coming out in your dreams. Your dreams is actually giving you clues on what is the truth beneath the emotions, the underlying truth, because I feel that the truth is even hidden to you. I don't know if you have your moon in the 12th house. A lot of people who do um, can find that their emotions are a mystery to even themselves. Uh, your emotions may run very, very deep and your dreams in this situation are just allowing you to relieve a little bit of the misunderstandings that you're experiencing in your day to day. And they also want to shed some clarity on what those misunderstandings could be about and what is actually going on. Interestingly, I keep feeling drawn to the King of Pentacles. We did mention the King of Wands, and for some reason in my mind I heard King of Swords. So there's something with... Uh, either you have taken on this role yourself, or you've seen this with the men in your family around you. There's this sort of distorted perception of the ideal man. Does that make sense? So you may be, uh, if you are a man, then you may be putting a lot of pressure on yourself to be that ideal man that perhaps you didn't see growing up. Or, if you're not a man, um, you could just have uh, this longing for that ideal sort of male figure, paternal figure in your life. And that could also be the case if you are a man, of course. 
So there's, there could be many different, just like this card suggests, possibilities to explain um, the, the King of Pentacles in this particular reading. But one thing for me is very clear where you're, uh, I do feel in many ways that, you know, your emotions are these reactions to you, the thoughts in your head and to some of the, the family ties, maybe with siblings, maybe with, you know, male relative, um, something that has gone awry within your 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 family base where you're supposed to feel safe and secure and you don't feel this way and now all of a sudden you're experiencing these dreams that are just helping you to release a lot of that tension that you're holding within your your heart space right and so if you take a look at the imagery of your dreams and you just do some quick Google searches, you may find that uh, the descriptions of those dreams, images, really make sense in accordance to what you're going through because as a collective reading, this is going to be different for each and every one of you, correct? So I would say that in general, your dreams are giving you clues about the truth under your emotions and the interactions that you have. They're just bringing that to life. Um, and you need to pay attention to the messages that they bring. Hmm. I'm going to bring out another deck for a little bit more information here. So this is... Right, this deck over here from the fairy forest and I'm going to shuffle the cards and see just for clarity purposes some extra messages here just two wanting to come out so that's perfect let's take a look we have elf struck enchanted beguiled and spell beguiled and spelled sorry uh, hedge witch, the hedge witch, herb wisdom, secrets, and hidden lore. I don't know if I can, I'm just going to put that on there like that, kind of artistically, if you will. So exactly, the idea of what's hidden, the idea of secrecy, okay, where a lot of your emotional experience in your day is being stuffed down beneath you, or you're not able to express that very clearly to other people, okay? When you really face up to the messages that your emotions hold, in your day experience, your dreams are going to change and they're going to take on a clear tone, a brighter tone, okay? I'm getting that some of you enjoy almost your dream life though even more than your waking life because it offers a sort of escape from the tensions that you do experience with not being able to express your emotions and not bring, being able to bring them to, to light, okay? with others. But be careful of certain escapist tendencies because it's very important to be here and now and grounded in reality in order to, for so many reasons, right? In order to move forward, in order for personal growth, involvement, learning lessons, uh, applying the lessons that you learn from your mistakes and um, solutions that you learn from your mistakes and also uh, in order to go towards your, your life path, you need to be in the here and now. You're not going to go towards your life path by escaping all the time. Okay, take a look at your moon sign. I know I mentioned moon in the 12th house before. You may be a cancer. There's a little crab here. You may be a cancer moon. So you may be very particularly um, empathetic to others and sensitive and your deepest needs may involve just wanting to nurture and love others but in so doing you put your own needs on the back burner and you forget about your own needs and what happens is that when you do for someone who is so sensitive and who is so in tune with other people's needs um, 
you're actually ungrounding yourself. You may feel dizzy, you may feel ungrounded, and this is due to you sort of dissociating from your own feelings of pain. You escape into other people's pain to take care of them, but this is not going to help you in the long run. You really need to focus on how you're feeling first. Not that you don't care for others because that's your nature, that's who you are, of course. And it's beautiful. We need more people like you. But you need to heal yourself first. And I keep holding my stomach. You can't see me, but I keep holding my stomach. So I feel like some of you are having stomach issues. Maybe you have IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, um, Crohn's disease, all right, different stomach issues, even constipation or some light gas or just random cramps and aches, watch out for this. I'm hearing rose tea, but I don't know very much about tea, so I'm not sure of the healing property of roses, but that's just what came to mind. Um, <laughs> you may want to give it a try. I don't know. I'll look into it. But, um, you know, if it doesn't, doesn't work for you, no, don't, don't worry about it. I'm not much of a tea drinker myself, but the, the, the words of... Um, rose tea came to mind with your stomach issues so I could be totally off on that like I said I'm not a tea drinker but your dreams are basically just saying that they're saying you know pay attention to us pay attention to your emotions pay attention to your needs okay uh, because some of you your dreams are quite scary or quite just bizarre and a little unruly and this is your dreams, your subconscious and your unconscious or whatever, trying to get your attention, your psyche, right? Trying to get your attention to say, you know, hey, pay attention to me. You haven't resolved this issue. And the stomach is also associated with the, um, the third chakra, which is the uh, solar plexus usually associated with the color yellow. Don't worry too much about colors because different people have different interpretations of the chakra colors. Uh, most predominantly though, the color that is accepted um, commonly for the solar plexus is yellow. And yellow is all about self-empowerment, willpower, um, independence and positivity, right? So if you're having stomach aches, this also can point to the fact that you're feeling just like you're under other people, uh, uh, one person in particular, under someone's thumb, you know, like they're always kind of putting you down. And then you're looking to this sort of back to the paternal figure for reassurance and guidance because you yourself don't feel like you have a, a strong footing in the world. And it's almost like you're just floating about outer space. Now, you do have a psychic ability that is very much in tune and connected with your dreams. And you should explore that. That being said, we're talking about more of the healing aspects in this video. And what you can do here is just to keep a dream journal. Write down some of the weird images that you see. Look them up and see how they fit in. And then... And then, you know, uh, see how in your day to day you can do some mindfulness practices to pay attention to how you're feeling. And the way that you would address that is uh, just by being aware, by being aware of the feeling, not being afraid to feel it. Okay, I know feeling feelings are kind of scary sometimes. I get it. But don't be afraid to feel whatever it is. All right, you can imagine, I say this a lot in my videos, but imagine roots coming out from the bottom of your feet, anchoring you deep into the ground. The scarier the motion, the scarier the thought. Your roots go deeper and get stronger to make you stronger, okay? Just like for a tree, the, the, the bigger the winds around the tree, the stronger the tree will try to, you know, hold itself to the ground type of thing. So it's the same kind of idea with you where just imagine that strength coming from these imaginary roots and then just breathe in, breathe out, feel it. Know that it's a temporary thing and then ask for what is the message that is supposed to be coming up with this emotion? 
What message can you offer me? What am I supposed to know with this feeling of anger? Oh, I feel like people are stepping over my boundaries and I say yes, yes, yes to a point where I explode and then I just hold this anger within me. Okay, that could be, oh, maybe I should create more obvious boundaries and try to say no every now and then because if I say yes all the time, then I'm just going to feel resentful. No, that could be a message. Another message could be, um, I just feel sort of empty and sad. So why do I feel this way? Maybe I just feel like um, I don't have any interest. Uh, maybe someone told me a long time ago that the passion that I, you know, the thing that I really want to go for is nonsense. And so instead I try to please everybody and be what they want it to be, but it sort of left me hollow and feeling like, um, you know, there's nothing left within me. So that, that could be a message there. And that certainly could be a message for some of you. So I want you to really pay attention to your dreams. Write the images down when you wake up, look them up, and then try to, because the main thing is try to pay attention to how you're feeling during the day and know that other people's stuff that they project at you is their problem. It's their projection. That's all it is, okay? People uh, oftentimes will project their own insecurities at others. So it's important to recognize that if someone gets angry at you or, or whatever it is, that um, very rarely does it, you know, is it actually personal? It's usually something that they have an issue with um, and that they feel hurt about, right? It's like, it's crazy, you know, we keep, we keep throwing th stuff back, like just imagine a tomato, we just keep throwing this tomato and it's, you know, all of the juices of the tomato just kind of go soak our clothing and then we get angry and we throw another tomato and it just never ends, right? So we need to learn how to stop, understand that this tomato is, you know, a representation of that person's, you know, uh, insecurities of, why did you do this? Why can't you fill the void? You know, and, and it's often, there are often two sides. It takes two to tango in a situation. So remember that. Um, I did mention sister sibling rivalry at the beginning. This may be just an issue where one sibling is being granted more privileges or attention than the other. And you may be the other who does not get as much, uh, attention and reward, etc. Also, try not to project anything at that sibling, or if you're the one who gets more attention, that sibling is projecting onto you, just know that there's a reason they just feel hurt and they feel left out. So try to get into other people's heads in the sense of understanding, you know, the mask that they wear, just like the moon also represents masks, a facade, right? The mask that someone wears on the outside is not necessarily representative of what is going on in the inside. And there's always two sides to things. And so if someone is projecting a certain thing that you're receiving, understand that actually something got lost in translation here. If someone says, you know, whatever, I hate you. Well, maybe what they're really trying to say is you really hurt me so badly and I want you to feel the same pain that I'm feeling so you know what it feels like. And maybe then you'll pay attention to me. You know, it's like, as human beings, we're so convoluted at times, right? It's pretty complicated. And maybe there's a lot of sensitive people around you and or you are also pretty sensitive. And it's hard not to be in an environment where everyone's pretty sensitive in general. So pay attention to your emotions. Understand that other people's emotions and projections are just representative of their insecurities and that and their feelings of being hurt and it has very little if anything to do with you a lot of the times most of the time okay and then you know make an effort to nurture yourself first nurture how you feel take a break take a bath go for a walk meditate you know play with the dog I don't know go do something go do something good for you watch something that makes you laugh and get into uh, a healthier mindset. But first, don't be afraid to face those scary emotions. Understand that they are transient, temporary, and they will pass. All right, I hope you liked the reading. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you next time.
high there, number two. Okay, beautiful amethyst cluster. And see what we have for you here. I'm going to start off with the regular um, tarot. Okay, and we're going to shuffle these cards. Let's see what we have. Whoops. I know I'm not I'm not the greatest shuffler in the world. I'm just getting one actually, so I'm gonna take back the other one because I'm just hearing in my head just one. And this one is this sorry, I was gonna say I'm all over the place. The five of wands. Seven of wands and five of wands have a similar energy to me. I was about to say the seven of wands. Um, this idea of struggle and work, although Seven of Wands is more about working hard. Five of Wands is about the idea of struggle in your work and feeling like you're not getting anywhere. Okay. I'm going to do the Fairy Oracle deck, so we're going to shuffle that. I'm going to take out... Oh, I don't want that many cards. So we're going to, it's always awkward to shuffle like this in front. I don't know how people do it. Okay, so again, one. Oh no, okay, two. Two for this one. Two for this one. Let's see what we've got here. Interesting, this one came up in the last one. So if you were drawn to the first crystal, you may want to check out uh, the reading for number one as well. So we have the Princess and the Pea Sensitivity. And we have Snow White Purity. Okay. Great. Now we are going to look at the Fairy Forest. I'm going to take out how many? Two or one? Two. Okay. So we have Blood Month, Sacrifice Offerings and Decision. And I love this one. The Ancient. Elder Experience and Lessons. I love the ancient. That is neat. Are you having interesting, weird dreams and being visited by um, a past loved one, perhaps, or like just an elder of some sort? That's interesting. You know, write, let me know in the comments down below if that is happening to you, something to that effect. Okay. Now, for whatever reason, I'm also getting to look at the unicorn, the oracle of the unicorn. So I'm going to shuffle and I'm just going to take out one. And there we go. One. <laughs> All right. So this is rebirth. Ooh, love it. Reinvent yourself, give life to your dreams and create a new reality. My dog just did a little happy shake. So he is confirming that your dreams are trying to tell you something very important about rebirth. I'm actually gonna just, yeah. Okay, never mind. I was gonna pull out another card, but no, we're gonna leave it like that. So, this is in your mind, a lot of the struggle that you are experiencing in your day-to-day -day, that you feel that, you know, things are slow or you're not getting anywhere or you feel like you're pushing and people are saying something else and you keep pushing forward, maybe a project at work or at school that you're working on, okay? Um, you are a sensitive person. You are a very compassionate person. You're very aware of the needs of others, which is beautiful. Your dreams are coming forward with an interesting message. Number one, I don't know if you're aware but you're very connected to the cycles of the moon. And in particular, when there's a blood moon, okay, when it's kind of like an orangey red type of thing, this guy sounds very gruesome and terrible, terrifying, but it's not. Um, 
this is an extremely intense energy. It represents an extremely intense energy. And when this happens, for as old as you are, for as young as you are, for as many years that you have left of your life, every time there is a blood moon, pay attention to the calendar because there is some kind of huge rebirth or transformation that will be happening in your life at that time. Lots of intense spiritual energies which you'll feel and your dreams might reflect this sort of odd odd images and you know just weird story plot lines that don't make sense around this time especially but you might have been experiencing this already so you are uh, someone who is um, a very you have a very pure heart and a very pure soul but but I'm getting that you're an empath and you tend to attract a lot of um, narcissists, otherwise known as in spiritual communities, energy or emotional vampires, okay? Um, an energy vampire can come in all kinds of forms. Basically someone who, when you're around them, after the interaction is done, doesn't mean that they're a bad person, but you just feel drained because they're operating at a very low vibrational energy. They're very needy of your time and your positive light. And so uh, what's happening right now in your dreams is you're unwinding, okay? Your dreams are allowing you to unwind. You can finally relax in your dreams. Your energy as an empath is, is recharging. And as it's recharging, um, your dreams take on sort of a healing vibration. It's not so much your dreams I'm getting. It's just generally when you sleep, your energy can recharge. It's like you're, you're in some sort of vortex portal as you sleep, and then there's a certain healing energy that gets funneled down from, from spirit, um, like your spirit guides and higher power, and then just helps to recharge you. So you might be getting interesting visits from different spiritual beings coming to see you in your dreams. And what they're doing is they're wanting to heal you, they're wanting to nurture you, and they're wanting to just bring you in general um, mental stimulation that you don't always get during the day because you're just highly evolved and empathic and you don't always get to connect with people the way you do with certain spiritual beings in your dreams, if that makes sense, okay? And so you're highly protected, by the way. Despite the sort of narcissists or energy vampires that are around you, um, your spirit guides guard you very, very well. And I know it doesn't seem like that. Sometimes you need to experience working with these lower vibrational people in order to be able to recognize them later on and to teach others how to recognize them as well. Okay, but you are protected there's a feeling of struggle when you go out in your day to day just because of your high vibrational energy and the mundane can be so, feel so um, limiting at times. And I'm hearing some of you say boring. Uh, yes, be careful of that mentality too, because what you put out into the universe, you attract. So if you keep saying life is boring, life is boring, uh, the 3D is boring, it's boring, dreams are interesting, but everything else is boring. Um, watch out for that mentality because you're gonna attract more of it. So put out positive thoughts of attracting maybe your soul tribe or just sort of empaths like you or high vibrational people. You will pull those people towards you. You would be surprised. And I wasn't going to put a card out at the beginning, but I'm going to do it now. And I was looking at this one. Imagination. And the words are uh, envision a new reality. Give yourself permission to dream. Interesting that says dream. Believe in unlimited possibilities. So that is pretty cool. 
you have these beautiful manifestation abilities and actually, oh, so interesting. You are a lucid dreamer. You can create your own reality in your dream. And if you're not aware of this ability to have lucid dreams, in other words, dreams in which you are aware that you are dreaming, where you can basically create whatever fantastical reality you want to create, um, look into this concept of lucid, L-U-C-I-D, dreaming or dreams, and learn what the techniques are in order to lucid dream. All it takes for you in particular is just the desire to want to do it, and it's not going to take much. Some people need to practice this a lot. You're already pretty. You're uh, not pretty. Very tapped in. But you are pretty. <laughs> or handsome. But you're very tapped in. That's what I'm trying to say. You are very, not just pretty tapped in, but very tapped in. And the beings that are coming to visit you, some of them are your spirit guides and they come with messages. They want to connect with you in your dreams. So that's partly what your dreams are all about, okay? There's this healing energetic space that's being created around you, around your, um, your physical body, your etheric body, right? Your, all of the, the bodies that make up who you are, your auric field, all of that. And you're going through this sort of portal of like a healing vortex. While at the same time, when you slip into dream space, into REM sleep, you're being visited by these sort of shaman type spirit guides who are coming to heal you and give you important messages. So if you can wake up, whenever you wake up, even if it's at 3 a.m., and some of you may be waking up at 3 a.m. a lot. I don't know what I, why I said that. It has nothing to do with the cards, but... Some of you may be waking up and I'm, I'm hearing 222 two, two as well. You might just see synchronistic numbers during the day. Or you might just wake up at 222 two or 2 a.m. But I'm hearing mostly 3 or 222, two, two, which take what resonates, leave the rest, of course. Uh, this is a collective reading. But whenever you do wake up, jot down what you see because uh, after a while you may forget it. You know, or as soon as you remember it, even if it's during the day and you've forgotten your dream um, and you're just going about your daily business, just take out your phone. I have a special place in my phone where I put just dream notes. So I just have all my phone handy if I wake up and I have a weird dream and I just want to write down the notes and I will, I will do that and then go back to sleep. It could be in point form. It doesn't have to be super fancy. You can always transfer your notes to a proper dream journal later on but you are definitely going through a rebirthing period right now and the wise men and women sort of spirit guides if you will that are coming to see you in your dreams are preparing you for this rebirthing this this um ability to reinvent yourself and to come out stronger, not to just um, disappear or silence your voice. Your, your guides and your dreams are trying to get you to be stronger in your day to day and to know that you have the power in your mind to create your own reality, not just in your dreams as a lucid dreamer, but in everything that you do in your day to day. And you just have to will it into being. Just think positively about it. You can keep a vision board, as a lot of you may be, very clairvoyant since you are so given to these super lucid dreams. It's definitely a powerful gift that you have, the gift of clairvoyance, of clear seeing. But yeah, you're coming into a beautiful rebirthing period where you are going to become the stronger, um, better adjusted person in your day to day in your ability to handle situations that come your way. Yeah. So thank you for tuning in. That was a beautiful reading. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Number three. Okay, number three with tiger's eye. Very protective stone. 
Uh, you are also very protected in your dreams. Okay, you may, if you looked at number two, you may want to pick number two uh, if that pile resonated with you. But if not, then let's go on because you do have, there is a very different energy here. I can feel it. We're going to start with the tarot. Okay, just regular tarot deck. So here we go. I'm going to shuffle. Three cards. You have the most tarot out of all of the decks. Let's see these very important cards that want to come up. So you have the Six of Wands, which is all about success and victory lines and achievement coming home. You have the Two of Cups, which is usually about uh, partnerships and love, but we'll see what else we have. And you have the World. Okay, the 21st card of the Major Arcana of the World, which some tower readers consider it to be the best card in the pack, indicating that whatever you've been working on is coming full circle. And that really resonates because it's reflected in the other cards that you have here with the Six of Wands and achievements. Um, perhaps you are finally getting into that positive relationship with yourself or with others that you've always dreamt about. So some kind of cycle is ending and your dreams are trying to signal you of that. Okay, then you have, we're going to take a look at the fairy forest next. So let's shuffle the deck and let's take a look. Okay. Um, yeah, two cards. All right, that's it. Those are your cards. Interesting. Let's see what you have. Okay, so you have Duera. to such mysteriously deep, soulful eyes. And then healer, nourishment, and nurture. Okay, and then you have fairy godmother. And the words are revelation, discovery, and epiphany. Okay. There we go. So let's tune in and take a look. Well, my dear, you have certainly... Uh, been visited by angels or a some kind of a fairy godmother or some superly superly I invented this word on the spot sorry doesn't make sense super de duperly heightened uh, spiritual being could be a star seed as well um, it doesn't really matter but the the idea is that this being that's coming to you is, is has a very very high vibrational energy you may feel extremely tired at night and this is because uh, life is trying to get you prepared for the next phase where you're going to need a lot of energy and you're going to need to relax right now and get as much sleep as possible life does that to us sometimes when they want us to sleep they mess around with our sleep cycles and they say we're going to make you tired right now so that you you know are ready for the next steps so there's something really, really big that you have either just come into or are coming into soon. And your dreams are, um, it's almost like I'm feeling with this group that you don't necessarily have a lot of dreams that you remember too often. When you do remember dreams, it's like you can kind of remember them and you kind of not. And you might have happened upon this video just to say, well, you know, I'm going to see what she has to say. Maybe she has something interesting to say about my dreams, even though I don't remember them all the time. But the dreams that you do remember definitely stick in your head. Um, sometimes you want to tell other people about your dreams, but you feel like they're going to think you're weird. Um, you can be very conservative on the outside in your day to day, but people don't know that you have a very active imagination, very active third eye. Uh, pretty open crown chakra and you're very very open crown chakra sorry I was corrected um, and you are very in tune with uh, your higher self 
in the higher dimensions. And you will have uh, certainly these, these more soft, healing type of dreams with beautiful imagery when you do have these dreams. And this is just to get you to relax. Basically, your dreams are serving the purpose of just getting you to relax right now because you're coming into this phase of heightened activity and involvement and success and achievement and wonderful partnerships. And even if you're coming into a relationship, this relationship with somebody else is going to take a lot of energy from you because you're just going to almost feel like you're drunk on love, you know, just going to want to be with this person 24 seven type of thing. So right now you need to rest as much as possible, but I would advise that you maintain a good sleeping cycle in general. Um, the idea here is that, uh, you need to rest. I'm getting that some of you have very good heightened healing abilities. You're able to heal others um, with your words, with your touch, with your patience, and with your kindness. Likewise, your spirit guides try to do the same to you because you um, come off as very strong, like you don't need anyone to uh, heal you. But this is where your dreams come in and say, actually, buddy, you do. Please go to sleep and take so that we can take care of yourself because obviously you're not always giving yourself the care that you need or at least the mental, emotional care that you, that you need during the day. Okay, so sleeping right now is very important and your dreams want to make sure that your dream life is as relaxing and romantic in, in a sort of whimsical way, not necessarily romances in the traditional way. Um, overall, you know, pleasant dreams. Romance could definitely be in your life right now. And your dreams are reminding you to take that time, that very much needed healing time of separation to heal and to nurture yourself. Now, you don't necessarily have to be coming into a romantic relationship at the moment. You could be rekindling a romantic relationship, that being said. Uh, you can also just be, you know, coming into a more positive, like I mentioned at the beginning, relationship with yourself. And the relationship you have with yourself is probably the most important relationship you'll ever have because at the end of the day, you're going to have yourself. And so you better like being with yourself, right? And so you're coming into this powerhouse moment in your life if you haven't already. And your dreams just want to offer you that ability to rest and relax and take care of yourself while coming into your day to day. You feel ready, empowered, and full of self love. Your dreams are trying to infuse you with self love. Love, self-love, 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 confidence, self-love. So when you wake up, you can feel refreshed, you can feel energized, and you can give that love to others more easily. And you can be ready for the busyness of your day and the busyness of the amazingly triumphant and beautiful, um, exciting phase that you are coming in. Yeah, so don't get too alarmed with the word busy. Um, this is busy in a good context of doing things that you really enjoy and that you really love. Um, and so just, yeah, just enjoy your dreams because that's what, that's all that they're really trying to do for you is just to help you to relax. And that was it for you. That was pretty, that was a pretty cut and dry message in a sense. But it was very beautiful and it was very powerful. Whoa. Oh. Whoa. Was there uh, an earthquake here? No, it was just me being a klutz once more. All right. Well, thank you so very much for tuning in. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.